Mii Brawler is a very simple, close-range fighter with good speed and mobility, as well as customizable specials for more added depth. For neutral special, you'll have Shot Put, Flashing Mac Punch, and Exploding Sidekick. Shot Put is typically the best choice, as if you full hop and buffer it, you'll be able to pressure in neutral from a distance to potentially try controlling the pace of the game against slower characters, as if they shield it, you might be able to follow up on its pressure, especially since it can allow you to shield poke. Or you might force them to jump, which can let you anti-air or catch landings. Shot put can also be landed with no lag if you jump, delay the double jump, and shot put to make combos easier. This will also get even better with platform bounces. On hit, it'll grant you combos. Preferably to be defensive, you'll drift it back, and to be aggressive, you'll drift it forwards at the end. It'll potentially cover your landing if sent really high, and it'll also be really good for edge guarding and ledge trapping if thrown from the right distance where it would barely fall off the ledge. Flashing Mac Punch is a strong multi-hit mix-up and anti-air for killing. If you whiff or hit a shield, you'll stop punching halfway in, which can be punished. It can be used as an out-of-shield option if you jump and press B and even B reverse it out of shield. It'll also easily punish spot dodges and shield poke if aimed for the head. As well as you could try going off stage with it for edge guards. Exploding Sidekick is basically a Falcon Punch, but with armor at the end of the move. It's not completely useless though, as it's very safe against shield, and you could use it for platform tech chases, although it's a very optimistic move to play with. For side special, there is Onslaught, Burning Dropkick, and Suplex. Onslaught is for whiff punishing and tech chasing. It has no combo potential and is purely for killing, as this move gets a much bigger boost from Rage than usual. In fact, it has a bit of a charge-up system, and you'll see a pink flash whenever it's at its strongest. As well as it ignores the opponent's weight, and will instead kill you earlier the floatier you are. It will be very punishable on shield, however, and using it off stage might kill you early. Burning Dropkick is a slightly weaker but more flexible burst option to kill with. It'll also be unsafe against shield and can be used off stage to potentially boost you forward. Just be careful as there is still lag after the move so you might get punished. If you're jumping in, you should normally press the move to move forward the furthest. If B reversed, you'll slightly lessen the range. And if you jump back and do it normally forward, it won't go very far. But B reverse it and it'll boost itself forward. The best thing about it is that if you short hop it forward, it'll be really good at punishing opponents if you predict them throwing a projectile. Suplex is another burst option, although it's a command grab, dealing a lot of damage, but will never kill. It'll be one of your most useful special moves as it'll complement your basic neutral game plan really well, especially in how you would use neutral airs to anti-air them, pressure them, and condition them shielding on the ground. It'll also have very little lag if missed, and even less if you did it from a slight jump, meaning it's a really good out-of-shield option and a great option from the ledge. Grab them close to the ledge and you'll drag them down with you. You'll die first, and if the opponent's recovery is good enough, then they might still be able to make it back. It'll also set up onto platform tech chases at low percents. On the same frame that the grab connects, the move has heavy armor that can take up to 14% for single hits. For up special, you'll have Soaring Axe Kick, Helicopter Kick, and Thrust Uppercut. Soaring Axe Kick can be pressed once or twice, and will be your best vertical recovery. It'll also be an incredible out-of-shield option with lots of range, good speed, and has the potential to anti-air as well as spike. And you'll need to punish it very quickly if it hits a shield as it has little lag. It can also be used close to the ledge to try robbing people off stage, or it can be used to trade with an opponent's hitbox while they recover. Otherwise, it won't kill till really high percents and will not protect you going upwards towards the ledge. Although, this will be your most reliable recovery if you want to mix up going high and then low.
Helicopter Kick will be your worst recovery move, and will basically only recover slightly horizontally, meaning your edge guarding game will be much less viable. Instead, it's a slightly faster out of shield option, as well as it's mostly used as a combo finisher to rob opponents early. It'll combo off of down tilt, which if you DI away might make it harder to combo, up tilt, and down throw, which you'll want to DI in, making it harder and less likely to kill. These confirms will work around 40 till around 80% depending on weight, but will also require you to react to DI correctly or predict the DI sometimes for the combo to be successful. You'll also have to know when you need to jump double jump to get the combo as well for higher percents. Landing an up air into the kick will always work, as well as the late hit of neutral air can set up for it as well at mid to high percents. You can change the launch angle of the last hit by adjusting your control stick direction on the very last hit, so you could hold back, not hold any direction, or hold forward for the best launch angle. The only reason to hold backwards is when this is done out of shield on a platform, so this means that you can also pull back on the helicopter kick to try surviving and still hold forward on the last kick for the better angle. And finally, we have Thrust Uppercut, which is an average recovery and will protect you on the way up, making it slightly harder to challenge. It'll be your fastest out of shield option and will kill at very high percents from the ground as well as it can be used as an anti-air. It'll be great to kill confirm on platforms if you ever hit down throw, landing up air, up tilt, and even down tilt, unless you DI down tilt away. Anyways, there are a lot of setups into Thrust Uppercut and a lot of them can take your stock really early, which I'll be going through later. For down special, there is head-on assault, faint jump, and counter throw. Head-on assault comes out pretty early, deals a lot of damage, and will spike if taken off stage and kill at 0%. It'll break your shield if you hit all the moves, but you can roll out of the situation. As well as the initial hit of the move will rarely combo into the rest of the move. You can also move it a slight bit to the left and right and will be decent for punish mistakes on platforms. It might work against a few recoveries if you really need to rob your opponent, but remember, you won't grab the ledge when facing backwards. Fame Jump will generally be your most valued down special, as it's basically a slightly worse version of Flip Jump, allowing you to move forward with it or pull back with it, and will generally give you extra mobility, a more flexible disadvantage state, as well as an additional escape option, especially since it gives you intangibility at frame 2 to 4. A better recovery since it allows you to go high and boost yourself in, you can also reverse edge guard if you manage to jump on their head, as well as the kick is another possibility to edge guard recoveries. It's a better way of dealing with projectiles, as well as it can be comboed into after a low landed neutral air, unless they DI out. The launch angle will also be different on grounded or airborne opponents, and you'll be killing earlier if you hit them airborne. Pain jump can also help you in edge guarding if you jump out with it so that you can go lower and still recover. If you use it from a grounded position, you'll suffer a ton of lag when landing. Instead, try using it at the peak of a full hop for an auto cancel. Either way, it'll be important to keep the opponent guessing on how you would be using this move. Don't get too greedy with the kick, however, as if they block it, it'll be very punishable. So, in those cases, it's better to just let yourself land without kicking or mix up your kick timing very well. And knowing the distance from where you can auto cancel the kick will help you out a lot as well. Holding up on the flip part of the move will allow you to wall jump off edges and walls as well. Counter throw will only counter right in front of you for a very short time. It is extremely strong however and will only have half the lag compared to normal counters if whiffed. It also won't protect you from projectiles and is vulnerable at defeat. It can be surprisingly strong if used at the corner. And in the air, this move has a bit more of a vertical angle and its grab box is way bigger than the grounded one so it could be used to punish opponents mashing too. All the means have their own notation or identification, starting with neutral, side, 
up and down for the specials. In this case, this is 1, 2, 3, 1. The most common combinations of specials are shot put, suplex, feint jump, and the up special will be completely up to you depending on what you value more. This would be known as 1, 3, x 2 and is a great place to start. For some matchups, it'll generally be better to go for flashing Mac punch if you are playing against faster opponents that dodge the shot put too easily and require you to anti-air more. Regardless, it's important to experiment around to see what kind of playstyle you want to have. As for neutral, it's as straightforward of a neutral as you could imagine. You'll be dash dancing a lot at burst range to try finding whiff punishes with dash attack and dash grabs. You'll pressure with dash down tilt, dash forward tilt, and mostly neutral air. Whether it's a landing neutral air, short hop neutral air, full hop neutral air to cover jumps at the same time as pressure, double jump mix-ups, fast wall mix-ups, land in their face and spot dodge or use your jab as a mix-up, cross up neutral air into dashes away, tilts, shielding, or just full hop some more with neutral air. It's completely up to you, but the goal is to overwhelm the opponent, stuff out as many jumps as you can, whiff punish as much as you can, and grab as many shields as you can. Everything else comes down to your combo game, how you ledge trap or corner pressure, and how you find the kill. Just like most standard neutral airs, it'll have an early strong hit and a long-lasting weak hit, and the lower you land it, the safer it'll be, allowing you to even dash away without needing to space it for simple pressure and bait and punish. At starting percents, if you hit the initial strong hit, you'll mainly want to combo it into a grab, suplex, or even better, a down tilt. The weak hit will only allow you to combo into a grab or a jab, until you start hitting around 10-20%, where it'll now start comboing into tilts, Around 50-60%, you can start also comboing it into a forward tilt or another neutral air to set up for tech chases. If the tech is missed, it'll basically lead into death. If they do tech, it'll be up to you whether you want to read it with a dash tilt, another aerial, or try reacting to their techs instead with dash attacks. Eventually, once percents are high enough, you'll be able to try connecting it into back air or up smash against floaty characters DIing in. If the percent is too high, however, you'll force a tech chase instead for a 50-50, where you'll either read their missed tech, tech in place, or tech roll away with a dash into up smash. At low to mid percents, you can also buffer the neutral air and fast fall it for combos as well. This is all assuming you hit them while they are grounded. If you anti-air them with neutral air as you land it, it won't combo into grab or down tilt, and instead you'll just have to quickly react with an up tilt, a follow-up aerial, and possibly an up smash. Obviously, for mix-up sake, you could also use any of the other aerials in neutral. Forward air will mostly be there to call out short hops and will provide a few basic combos at low percents. Otherwise, it starts forcing a tech chase if you hit grounded opponents with the second hit. Just keep in mind that it's not that great of an aerial in terms of pressuring shields as it can get punished much easier than neutral air. Landing with an up air is just fine for good shield pressure and will literally combo into almost anything as well as kill confirm at high percents, so using landing up airs to catch landings and combinations with up tilt is really good as it'll always lead into something till high percents. Landing your back air is good shield pressure as well as long as you space it. It'll also lead into combos at low percents and force tech chases at mid percents. Otherwise, it'll also be a very good short hop callout or full hop callout to kill at higher percents. It'll more so be used for corner pressure since you can back air and tilt, back air and shield to punish, back air to dash away and punish aggression, punish rolls in, and even react to jumps. If they stay at the corner, you could always try pressuring again, read a late roll or jump, or just go for a grab.
Down air won't be safe against shield, but it can be something that you land with for combos. As well as it'll straight up just kill at very high percents. And of course, off stage, it'll spike opponents. Up air has an auto cancel window if you buffer it and delay the fast fall. This will be super effective against all characters and combos. Down throw leads into any of his aerials, and you can even slightly delay the aerial to try getting a bit more out of it. It doesn't really matter how you DI the down throw, there will always be a combo. Once you start hitting 80 or 90%, a follow up aerial won't combo against any DI, but you can still jump towards them and react with Thrupper or against DI in, you can reverse it and still catch them. A few characters might get launched even further and it won't be as easy as this, and they might be able to air dodge. So it's only a kill confirm against a few characters at very right percents and correct execution. Double jumping won't be a good idea as it'll most likely get caught, and with rage you basically just have to keep in mind that the percentage window might be 10 to 30% earlier depending on weight. What I mean with execution is that you'll want to time your up B as high as possible, rather than just doing it immediately so that it doesn't kill. And then right as you press up B, hold in so that you travel much more upwards and actually get the kill. By the way, if you do want to find out about all these setup specific things, like what character it works against, at what percents, then check out the images in the description. Anyways, because this precise execution is needed and because because rage affects things as well as it being character specific, unless you know it'll work it'll be very risky as it might cost you trying this while at high percents. But if you ever grab on a platform, the opponent should always, always be dead. And you can easily set this up with things like down tilt, up tilt, or landing up air, and while setting it up you'll typically want to wave dash on the platform and react to their option or jump to avoid their attack and land and grab. You might also find this through a combo extension with up air, up air into it, up tilt, or even down air. Not pummeling at all is good as you don't want the opponent to be ready with DI. DI in is something that you might get an easier thrupper against. And if they DI away, the forward throw will set up really well into edge guards. Till very much higher percents where it's now recommended to pummel to try killing. So, um, don't get grabbed, and if you do get grabbed, be ready to DI away and then directional air dodge in to push yourself away from it as it'll be your best shot at escaping. Down tilt won't combo on its own until roughly 10-20% into any aerial or up special, and around 50-60% it'll stop comboing against DI away, but still always combo into anything against DI in. It'll also be much harder to combo if you hit with the end of the down tilt. Forward tilt starts setting up tech chases at mid percents. Dash attack will only combo at starting percents into Thrupper, unless they DI away. Generally, it won't combo at all, but it can follow up into full hop aerials if the opponent mashes or does nothing. And instead, you'll now force DI away and double jump or air dodge that you can try to outplay. Up smash will be a great kill option out of shield as well as neutral air can be done at earlier percents into tech chases which might also kill. So basically you have a ton of quick and good options out of shield that you can use. Ledge trapping is pretty simple as well. You can stand at down tilt range to pressure ledge stall and then shield into neutral air, grab or up smash to punish regular get up and get up attack. Short hop neutral air to deny ledge jump preemptively or full hop aerial to try reacting to ledge jump as well as react to rolls with jump side B out of shield. You could also stand at roll distance to cover the roll and be ready to pressure with back air against regular get up react to jump with full hop backers as well as dash down tilt to punish ledge stall. And if they double jump in, you'll be able to whiff punish. Combine this with good usage of specials and you'll be really effective at ledge trapping. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you liked it. And if you want to support my work, then please help me out on Patreon. And to all my Patreons, thank you so much for all the support. And feel free to come by my Twitch as I stream almost daily from 4pm EST.